So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a generative visual identity. And the idea here is that we have a system created in a single composition, but that can be used to create hundreds, thousands more versions, but just at the click of a button. And so just to preview this, we've already hooked this up uh, to our dynamic rendering feature. And I'm just gonna iterate through this number here. As you can see, we're getting a different version of the same creative every time I change that number. Now, before we get into this, I need to credit Pentagram. Uh, this is obviously, this um, tutorial is heavily inspired by their work for GraphCore here. Um, what really keen to illustrate though is um, for Pentagram to put this together, uh, this video here kind of shows a bespoke application that they built specifically for this project. Um, the beauty with Cavalry is that you don't need to be able to code etc to be able to build these kind of systems and um, yeah let's get into it to show you how it all comes together okay so let's start a new composition and let's start by just setting up the to match the composition size in our demo which was 1080 1920 and let's just get straight into it and create a quad tree so I'm just going to hold down command or control and full stop and then type quad into the quick add and just double click to add one and that will create a quad tree shape. Now what you can see is as I change the seed value here you can see that we're getting different configurations of that quad tree. Now I've got a little demo scene here just to give you an idea of how a quad tree actually works. So we have our quad tree here and then I've just um, rigged up these little dots in the duplicator and what these dots represent is the distribution that a quad tree uses to subdivide into all these other squares so you can pick any distribution that you like we're going to stick with random for this example but hopefully you can see that where there are dots squares have been subdivided so you can see there's no dots here so this square has remained a whole square this has been divided and this has been divided and divided again. And the way you can do this, you can adjust this, is if we change this max iterations here, you see if I change this to four, we get less iterations. So we get less of those small squares. If we go up to six, we'll get um, even smaller squares. And all that's happening is wherever the dots are, if I just drop this down to say 10, you'll see that we've got far less dots and therefore far less subdivision. And then we can use this seed to basically just reseed where those dots are appearing because we've got a random distribution. And that's exactly the technique that we're using here in this scene. So let's go back to our composition. A key thing with the quad tree is that it is a quad. And so it must be square. Well, it, it doesn't have to be square, but it works best square. So let's start by setting the size to 1920 by 1920 and then we want the actual distribution itself to be the same as you can see we've got this concentration of subdivisions in the middle here that's because our uh, random distribution is only 500 by 500 so let's take that to 1920 1920 as well uh, we could make a connection by the way from here into here just to keep those two uniform but we're fine with that for now now what you've noticed in that previous uh, little demo is that we really don't need many points to kind of get the effect that we need. So I found that a number of three works quite well for the system we're trying to build here. And we can just now change this seed value and you can see that we're getting our uh, different layouts. And so what we need to do now is create some shapes to put into each one of our quad tree uh, squares. And so let's start with something simple. Let's create an ellipse. So I'm just gonna hold down Option Alt and click onto the ellipse. Let's just give that a color. Um, and then we need to duplicate this. Um, so to do that, a quick way to do that is to select the ellipse shape, go up to the shelf here and click the duplicator. Now, what you'll see is that we've got this distribution set to a grid. For us to be able to populate all of these shapes onto the quad tree we need a distribution called sub mesh and once we've got that set we can now drag our quad tree shape into the input shape 
And now you can see that this is now filling. Each one of our squares has got one of our ellipses in there. Uh, the reason that is, is because it, we've got this fill all. We can turn this off and we can actually say, I just want 10, but we're gonna stick with that for this. Now, it doesn't really matter what size the ellipse is uh, because we've got this scale to fit checked. But what is important when we're adding more shapes is that they do have a square bounding box. So we can now just keep adding to this. Now I should say actually, I've got, a, I've got a palette here so we can start giving our shapes some colors. Let's add a polygon. So I'm gonna option or alt click on the polygon. Let's give that a different color. And again, just to make sure this does end up as a quad, I'm gonna give this 16 sides. In fact, let's go a little bit less, let's go 12. And, um, and then what we can do is on the duplicator, we can actually drag this polygon in as another input shape. Um, because the duplicator automatically uh, just loops through these indices, while it looks random, it is actually placing these things. Each one of the quad tree shapes does have an index and it's sort of placing this 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So even though it is ordered, you get that kind of random feel. Let's add a, another shape. Let's add a, let's, well, let's add a quad. <laughs> um, we'll give that a color and we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll just drag that straight into our input shapes here. So you can see we're starting to build something up. So I'm gonna add one more shape now. Uh, we're actually gonna draw this shape. So I'm just gonna turn off the duplicator and the quad tree for a moment. And as a guide, I'm gonna add another rectangle, or obviously a square in this case. And let's just turn off the fill, add a stroke. We'll just drop this down a little bit. And then if I just zoom in, I'm now gonna enable the grid here. And you can find the settings in here to determine how uh, big the steps are between all the lines. And I'm also gonna turn on snapping. And then in the settings, just make sure that I've got grid snapping enabled. And then with the pen, I'm just gonna click and you'll see that the pen will snap to the grid now. I'm gonna draw like a forward slash. And then for this, let's disable the stroke, enable the fill. And yeah, we'll leave that that color for now. We can actually delete this rectangle. We don't really need that anymore. And then if I turn the duplicator back on and the quad tree back on, I can then drag that editable shape and add another one into our mix. And so if we turn the quad tree shape off now, we don't really need that, we don't, it doesn't need to be visible. Let's just turn the grid off. We can now go into our quad tree shape and we can just change this seed. And you can see that we're pretty close to our final result that we're after really. One thing that's not happening though is that we're not getting randomized colors for each of the shapes. So the ellipse has this sort of uh, reddish color the polygon is always blue. And so we can use a color array in Cavalry to randomize that. So let's take all of our shapes here and I'm just gonna go Command or Control G to put those in a group, just to tidy this up a bit. And we'll call these shapes. And you can see I've got a palette over here ready to go. And a quick way to make a color array from a palette is to click the hamburger menu here and then go create array from palette. So a color array is just really a list of colors. And what we can do is we can use this list and use that to assign the color of each of our shapes. So a quick way to do this uh, will depend on which version of Cavalry you're in. If you're in a version previous to 2.0, then the way to do this is to load the editable shape or any shape into the attribute editor, go to the fill tab. And then if you select the other three, and then if you hold option or alt as you're making this connection, you can see that it's connected to all of those other shapes as well. Now in 2.0, this workflow has improved a little bit. And so all you need to do there is select all four of these. And then again, holding option or alt, drag, and then click fill color. And now you can see that we've got our color A connected to each shape. And so if I go back to our quad tree now and uh, change the seed, 
hopefully you can see that we've got um, ellipses with different colors. We've got uh, yellow. We've got these uh, slashes with different colors. So we're getting that variety across each of our shapes. Now let's just set a little background color so that we can see some of the white bits in there. We'll just change that to a gray. Okay, great. So now we're set up and we have our really sort of customizable, we can create lots and lots of variation just with this setup here. Something we can do to take this just a little bit further is it can actually also randomize the uh, distribution of all of the shapes within the duplicator as well. So to do this, if we go to the towards the bottom here of the duplicator, you'll see that we've got this auto ID. And what this means is that we're now just cycling through 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, because of the quad tree, as we suggested earlier, this do does give you that random appearance, but we can take control of that as well. So what we do is if I uncheck auto ID, you'll see that we're now, because our shape ID is set to zero, we're getting uh, all ellipses. And if we change this to one, we should get all polygons, which we do. And we can actually drive this with a, another behavior. So if I right click on here and go add behavior and we choose a random, if I double click to load this, you'll see that we've got a minimum and a maximum that we need to output. Now, we don't have uh, IDs from 0 to 10. We have IDs from, if I load our duplicator again, we have IDs from 0 to 3. So we need to make that match here. And then what you can see is as I'm changing this seed, even though the quad tree is not changing, we're actually changing the way the shapes are moved in there. So either, either way we can work. We're actually going to use both for this example. Great, so this is all set up. Um, from here, we can move on to the setup of the dynamic render itself. So if we open up the render manager, what you'll see is, if I just set this back to zero, at the top of the render manager here, we've got this dynamic index attribute. And we can actually use this to drive our other attributes within the scene that we've created here. So dynamic rendering is a very simple concept. All that really happens is, is that uh, when a render finishes, this number iterates by one. That renders. When that render's finished, this number iterates by one, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we can use is we can use this dynamic index to drive other bits of our composition here. So I'm going to make a connection from the dynamic index into the seed of our random. And then I'm also going to, let's just find our quad tree. I need to load that back in. We're also going to connect that into the seed here as well. And we can now preview the result of that by just changing this number. And you can see now that we're getting all of our variations. So from here, we just need to click the add current composition button. And this will add the current composition to the render queue to create this render queue item. Now for this, for our format, we can stick with PNG. You can obviously pick whatever you like. You can do the same thing with movies. Um, we just want to do the current frame. There's no animation. So we're just gonna render the current frame. And then if we go over to the dynamic tab, we need to check dynamic render. And um, from there, you can see we've got this ensure unique file names checked. Now for this example, we're going to do something different here. All this really does is prevents you from overwriting uh, the previous render with the next render so that, you know, even if you set 100 renders, you end up with one at the end because they've all over overwritten each other. But we're actually going to set a dynamic name ourselves. So I'm going to uncheck this. And for this example, we're going to render 100 renders just so that we can get through this for the tutorial. So in the output, we want to make sure that this file name is not going to be the same for each one. So let's start with a default name and I'm going to put an underscore and I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to choose a render token, which is our dynamic index. So now if we look at the bottom here, you can see that we've got a name called poster.0. Now these we can ignore for this particular example because we're just doing still frames. Uh, but if I go up one, you'll see that that is coming through into here. 
And so what we can do now is we've got our dynamic render checked. This is going to go into uh, a folder. We've got a project set on this one. So I can just hit render. And you can see we're firing through all of those very, very quickly. And if I just open up our actual folder now, where those all rendered to, I'm just going to preview all of these and just move down. You can see that we've output every single one of those and each bit of artwork has got a unique name. So that's how easy it is to set these things up. And of course, when you decide, actually, I'm not super keen on something. So let's say this a lip shape. Let's say we don't want that to be filled. We instead want a stroke. Let's set this to inner so it's not uh, going outside. Put this up a little bit, make our connection to the color array. And we can now just hit render again and it will overwrite everything. Or of course we could put it to a different folder if we like to. So one of the small thing from, from this version is that if I update this again, you'll see, just zoom in here, you'll see that we've got a little bit of a overlay that just tells us uh, which version or which edition of the artwork is being created. And this is really simple to set up. So if we go back to our comp that we've been working on here, I'm going to create a text shape. I'm just I'm going to option alt click on the text shape there. And for this, we're going to go right aligned. And rather than using the string here, we're actually going to do, I'm going to create a string generator. And for this, we actually want to do a formatted string. And the way a formatted string works is you can type anything, but anything between curly brackets, so this zero here, will output the string that we have in here. So we could have a name, let's say cav hyphen. And then for the string, we actually want a number. We want this dynamic index offset to be driving this. So for this, we need another generator. This time a value is good. We can take our dynamic index, connect this into here. And then for this, we want, let's keep our padding at three, but we'll take our precision right down. And now you can see, as I change our dynamic index, you'll see that we've got our number working. So we can just position this. Let's just take this down a little bit, put it wherever we want it to be. Let's darken it up. Maybe go with a bolder font. And then again, let's just render this out. So if we go back to those renders, you can see that we've now got our addition over the top. So there you go. We've just done 100 here. This could be thousands. This could be tens of thousands, millions. Uh, you know, shoot for the moon with these things. But hopefully this gives you a really good sense of how quickly you can set something up in Cavalry that can create a, a really wide variation of outputs. Thanks.